Um, hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Lambda Dex webinar series. Uh, today we're joined, we're excited to be joined by Hao Tian Lu, um, author of uh, the very popular Lava paper, probably one of the leading open source multimodal models out there. Um, and so, you know, we've done a lot of stuff with LLMs uh, over the past year. Um, and as these models become augmented with vision capabilities, uh, what are they actually capable of and, and what are their use cases? Um, and so Hao Tian, um, on the Lava side, will present uh, kind of like a deep dive into uh, what these models are, uh, what they consist of, um, as well as maybe any sort of future directions. Um, and then, and then we 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 have uh, Hao Tian from our side, right? Like we have Hao Tian Zhang on the Llama Index team, uh, who will present um, kind of some use cases with multimodal, especially using uh, Lava. So super excited to have this joint webinar. Um, and and Hao Tian, uh, feel free to take it away. Uh, thank you, Jerry, for the intro. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Hao Tian, and today I'm going to present uh, Lava and uh, we our work on large multimodal models to that can follow humans' intent. Uh, so we as humans, we can see and reason about the visual world and express and interact with natural language. And doctors can read the CT scans and explain their findings to the patients. The teachers will teach students just with conversations and we will share our findings on the social media and interact with others. So we would like to build a visual intelligent assistant that can actually reason about the visual world and reflect with natural language. And the closestly uh, related work along this direction are pre-trained image to text generative models where you have an uh it, it, it takes an image and output the text reflecting its understanding of the image and such works include JIT, blip2 and flamingo and they do have the basic visual reasoning capabilities while they generally lack the capability to follow complex instructions or uh, engaging very long conversations and back in March, OpenAI demonstrated GPT for Vision, which has very strong visual reasoning capabilities, but there has been no disclosure on how it actually works, and it is also not accessible until, until very recently. So our question is, how can we create such multimodal models that can actually follow human's intent and can do complex reasoning? And in NLP, uh, researchers find that although the pre-trained uh, language models that have take, uh, absorbed uh, Billions, uh, billions of tokens uh, contain vast knowledge, but they do not necessarily know uh, uh, what our intent are if you do not do further tuning. So uh, because they are trained with a next word prediction. So if you ask it uh, to, to explain the human's behavior cry, it will usually just do some completion style. So it will say like demonstrate the feelings, communicate silently. You, you, you can see from its response that it does have some understanding of this world and what crime means or what humans behavior mean, but it does not necessarily know uh, what we want it to say. So researchers find that uh, this is just completion style and it is not following instructions. And in NLP, researchers find that instruction tuning is a key to let it really follow humans' instructions or follow humans' intent. And specifically, instruction tuning are a small set of instruction and output pairs, which regularize how the model should perform or behave on the user's input. For example, uh, when you ask it to explain cry, you should say like, there could be many reasons why people might cry and give a specific reasoning and similar for rec movie recommendation. And by training on these samples, the model can generalize to unseen tasks during the inference. For example, suggest a movie that explores human behavior and can uh, leverage its pre-trained world knowledge and also the behavior uh, uh, it learned during the instruction tuning so that it can uh, answer this question much better. And to collect such data, one way is to let human to write uh, high quality handwritten instructions, which can be quite costly. And there's a recent paper called Self-Instruct proposed to leverage a strong language model teacher like ChatGPT to create such instruction at an affordable cost. Specifically, you can just provide ChatGPT with a small set of seed instruction output pairs as the examples and let it expand to million scale using in-context learning. And in this way, you can generate a lot of instructions for training the language model. And this has been leveraged to build powerful open source language models like Alpaca. So how do we create instruction following multimodal models? And Given such a basic architecture where you have a vision encoder that can encode the image into the feature space, you have a cross-modal connector that can make the language model understand those visual features. And you have a language decoder that can uh, really perform the reasoning and uh, 
output the text reflecting its understanding. And given this architecture, uh, we want sm sm uh, strong model uh, model components, and also we we would need a data set that we can train a model to follow the model model instructions. So how do we create such data set? And if we take a look at the uh, teachers uh, that are used in the uh, uh, to create powerful language model, uh, open source language models, we will find that those teachers are actually like text only, and there are no there were no powerful multi model teachers. So that's why we want to create Lava. And our first step is to uh, try to build such data set. And uh, we try to leverage a text-only GPT to create visual instruction following data. Specifically, we leverage the well-annotated data sets like Coco, where human has provided uh, the annotation for the image. And we can, if we can provide the image context in the textual format, this way, the text-only GPT can understand what's happening in the image, and it can uh, then uh, expand the instructions and outputs into the million scale just using a modified self-instruct pipeline. So we have image, and the Coco has the caption to provide the image-wide uh, image level uh, context. It can also have the uh, more fine-grained layout, which are region-level context, which we can have the uh, bounding boxes and categories. So these can provide the more uh uh th this can provide the, like the image context information to the GPT at different granularity, and we can prov uh have a like more specific example where we first have in context examples for uh to to directly guide the model with specific examples. So the user will just provide the image context in a textual format to uh. Uh, show like what the input will look like. And we also provide a sample response on what GPT should generate, which are instruction and output pairs. The instructions are basically the questions about the image and the outputs are the that uh, desired answer. And these are the in-context examples, which we show the model how it should respond. And then for any image from the uh, tr Coco training set, we just convert it to the text format as, a, as, a, as the same as what we presented here and ask GPT to generate new instruction output pairs that following some uh, predefined criteria. And it can also refer to the previous examples for a better understanding for the task and it can generate this instruction and output pairs. By do running this over and over again for each image on the Coco training set, we're able to obtain around 150K instructions where we have defined three types of responses, conversation, detailed description, and complex reasoning. And these uh, three types of responses are all, resp uh, are all uh, designed for a specific use case for the visual chatbot. And for the model, we uh, find that uh, the uh, we use the clip as a vision encoder, the vacu instruction to language model Vicuna as a language model, and for the projector, we just use a single linear layer, which we find be it quite be quite effective, because the uh, clip visual features already uh, contain lots of uh, great visual semantics, so we can just imagine it as a kind of a foreign visual language that's a language model can somehow understand. And you just use, use a le single linear layer to project it to a space that the language model can better understand. And that's why it can actually work. And we train the model for two stage, where in the first stage, we tr uh, train the pro this linear projector layer only on the image text pairs data set to, for Im feature alignment, so that during the process, the images are projecting to a space. And we learn this projector so that the this uh, projected uh, latent space can be understood by the language model. And then in the second stage, we fine tune the language model and the pr uh, projector end to end for the visual instruction tuning so that the model actually learns how to answer the visual questions. And uh, we do, uh, after training Lava, we do observe similar, uh, several interesting emerging properties. And before we dive into that, we do want to quickly revisit some of the properties of, of our training data. That our training data contains only common concepts, so there is a limited domain, and there is no human annotation during uh, in our training, uh, at least for the Lava V1. And also there is no explicit OCR data. So we do find that after training Lava, it, uh, it, uh, it has a great like visual reasoning capabilities to understand the unusualness of this image that the man is actually like ironing the clothes on the back of a minivan like GPT-4 Vision does. It also 
can uh, understand this humorously modified version of Mona Lisa uh, as a dog in a face, and it correctly identifies so. And also it has the uh, uh, emerging OCR capability that it can not only uh, recognize the text in the image, it can also uh, associate that with its pre-trained language knowledge that it, it, it recognizes that CVPR is actually a conference related to artificial intelligence. So people who are interested in AI may be interested in this in this conference. So it's quite a, uh, amazing as those are uh, emerging capabilities. And uh, so so uh, given uh, we have trained such an interesting model with great instruction following capabilities, how are we going to evaluate that? And we propose to leverage uh, text on GPT to evaluate this model. Uh, we draw the, our inspiration from the NLP, the Vicuna team's uh, GPT evaluation. And we just slightly modify our data creation pipeline to do this, where we provide the context uh, in the image context, we provide the instruction, and we provide a reference model output and the model, a model op output of an assistant that we are concerned. And then we ask G request GPT for the feedback on the performance of these two model assistants. And then the GPT, uh, we will provide several criteria, and the GPT will give the score of out, out of 10 and also provide a detailed ex explanation for that. Uh, and also like to uh, uh, better uh, facilitate this, we propose a benchmark called Lava Bench in the Wild, which we designed to be challenging and it can it requires knowledge play on training data. It has requires multi-model understanding and it, we also wanted to be able to uh, require the model to uh, uh, understand subtle, de subtle visual details. And uh, we have uh, we have provided very detailed annotations for the image so that the GPT, a text-only GPT can actually have the ground truth understanding of the image. And one of the example of the this challenging benchmark is that it will ask for what's a brand of a blueberry flavor yogurt in the image. So it should first uh, uh, identify the uh, uh, go through all the containers that are present in the image. There are multiple of the containers and it will need to first ident identify the blueberry flavored yogurt. And then it there are no uh, complete logo in a in, uh, uh, indicating the brand in this image, so it should uh it can either recognize this uh fire brand uh logo this partially visible logo it can actually memorize that and then extrapolate to to answer this or it can also uh see this uh small like how fire fire yogurt is pronounced and it can relate this to its uh pre trained knowledge and then guess that it is probably which brand. Yeah, so it's uh, an interesting and challenging benchmark, and we wanted to uh, provide us some insights on how the model is performing and also like how how the model should uh, try to improve. For example, how how does it extend to the knowledge beyond its pre-trained knowledge? Like, does our retrieval uh, really work? And we do want to test these capability as well. And since the introduction of Lava, there has been great works from the community extending Lava into different domains, modalities, and also uh, developing benchmarks for us to better understand the behavior of those vision language models. And we have also developed our own improved baselines with visual instruction tuning, Lava 1.5. And to, to uh, design an a improved baseline, we do want to try to figure out like what's the current uh, strengths and the weakness of Lava. And we find that actually Lava is very, very good at participating in visual conversations. And in those new benchmarks that are designed for visual conversations, Lava actually outperforms many of those uh, works that are introduced after Lava. Even some, some works are introduced in, uh, I guess uh, one or two months after Lava's introduction and Lava is still uh, ranking on top of those uh, benchmarks. But Lava does have room for improvements. For example, it does not necessarily uh, know how to give good short answers or yes, no answers for those academic benchmarks. It does not have uh, perfect OCR capabilities as well. So we want to uh, try to solve that. And one of the problem is the yes, no questions where we find that 
uh, Lava actually will answer like more than 90% of the questions to be yes. And the main reason was actually when we uh, generate our Lava instructions, we want the model to reduce the hallucination. So we, we asked GPT to uh, gen only generate questions that it can either confidently affirm or deny the presence of an object. But we find that GPT will tend to generate uh, questions that it can confidently assert the pres presence of an object. So basically when it generates a question that asks for the presence of an object, the answer will typically be yes. So this creates some bias for that. And uh, after uh, understanding this, we do want to uh, quickly revisit some of the common explanations of uh, on why Lava is not good at performing at VQA questions uh, comparing to other uh, follow-up works like Instruct Blip. And one of the common uh, explanation is that Lava does not use resampler, that instructional use QFormer and Q and use visual resampler where they have some additional vision modules that can re-encode the visual information uh, instead of Lava where it just simply project all the patches and provide it to the language model. And we uh we we guess that like this can be the reason, but actually we do do want to uh we we do want to know that Lava has the full model capa capability and also like because we uh do not uh downsample the image to the re uh, those resample tokens, so actually more information is preserved. So maybe that is not the key reason, and also uh some other uh papers say that. Uh, it may be the large scale pre training, and because Instructor use millions, hundreds of millions image to pre train, and Q and use billion scale, while Lava only actually use less than one million image to pre train. And we guess this may not also be the reason because the vision resampler has been pre trained with large scale data. So our our visual encoders are clip. It has been trained on four hundred million data. So that may not be the reason either. And one of the reasons that has been very few mentioned are the academic task oriented data. Where are those VQA data that can provide very specific visual knowledge? And we did not use that in the Lava V one. So we want to study how it can help us improve. And we perform our scaling study on Lava, and we uh, use three data sets, GQA, MME, and MMVET. Each are uh, designed for a specific aspect of the vision language model. Uh, the GQR for short answers, MMER for QA with format instruction, like please answer yes or no, and MMVET are for open-ended QA. And we find that directly as adding the VQA V2 data allows us uh, the Lava to significantly improve in the MME benchmark, where it achieves around one, uh, around the similar, almost a similar performance as the instruction with 14B model, and outperforms it in MMVAT. But we find that a uh, uh, an awkward situation, which uh, after including this data set and the same issue for instructional blip, which is that when we are, uh, provide this uh, image of the fridge and we ask Lava to say like, can you tell me what I can cook with these? Before that, Lava can actually uh, uh, identify uh, the sum of the ingredients in the image and provides a reasonable recipe. Well, after the training, the Lava will just say yes, and there's nothing else. So actually like after training, uh, with those short answer data, the model refused to provide natural answers. And we find the reason is actually simple because some of the uh, prompts that we use to incorporate VQA data are quite ambiguous. So that uh, actually like the, usually the model will just say a complete sentence when you ask like, what's the color of the shirt? But when we are training on the VQA data, we actually training it to say, yellow will be instead of a full sentence. And the same question will actually appear in our Lava instruct. So uh, when, when it is, so, so the model actually got confused at whether it should say a complete sentence or a small sentence. And when there are more and more VQA data in our data set, the model tends to overfit to those VQA data sets. And the solution is quite simple. Like we just propose a response formatting prompt where we ask, uh, we, we say that, you just explicitly instruct a model to provide a answer with some format, like answer a question using a single word or phrase, and it works very well. So we adding the formatting prompt allows it to surpass GQ, uh, surpassing struct blip on MME and also MMVET. We further um, uh, add additional data sets like OC, OKVQ and OCR data sets. So it actually outperforms struct blip on all those uh, uh, validation benchmarks. 
uh, when, when, when Lava is only using a subset of its train data. We also add additional uh, data sets to further scale it up. And our final model, Lava 1.5, achieves great performance on these benchmarks. And we further extend the benchmark to a wide variety of 12 benchmarks, and it, it, it outperforms uh, previous state of the art methods with great sample efficiency as we only use less than 1% of the data that we have been they have been using training. And Lava 1.5 has been able to generalize to different format prompts. For example, it can be instructed to the generate the JSON format. It can also be instructed to create prompts for stable diffusion, where you give it a very specific uh, uh, I, I, uh, identif uh, uh, annotation on how the prompt should look like, including like a, it should be uh, describing this uh, cartoon image at a specific order and Lava can follow such instructions. Also, it can be uh, uh, trained, uh, 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 it can uh, has also learned to follow the, those instructions to identify the factual errors in the questions, and it can, uh, it can uh, for those tricky questions, Lava 1.5 can handle that as well. So it will, even if you say that what's happening in the desert when there is no one, no such in the image, the Lava can identify that and say that there is actually no desert deserts in the image and it's actually a beach with palm trees, city skyline and a large body of water. And also it has uh, starting to uh, integrate the its JSON formatting prompt uh, probability uh, uh, capability and also the uh, OCR capability to do some information extraction uh, for those. Although it still has some room for improvement comparing with GPT-4 vision, but we do have an internal vision, a version that we may release soon that supports even higher resolutions and perform much better on those OCR uh, tasks. And yeah, I think that's all given the uh, time and uh, we have, we do have, uh, and I, I think this morning, like Lava has been uh, officially uh, merged into the transform hugging face transformers and uh, we would be able to use Lava much easier and we'll update the instructions on our GitHub page very soon. And hope you love Lava and you can try interesting examples on our demo page. And I think we will uh, hand the floor to Hao Tian. <laughs> And we we will do the Q, QA later, right, Jerry? Yeah. Um, so so this is this is great. I also um, first of all, thanks for a fantastic presentation. Uh, quick note: I realized I forgot to actually uh, announce the format to both of you as well as the audience. Um, so I figured we just run through like uh, two quick questions, two or three quick questions on on uh, lava right now, um, and then Hao Tian uh, Jiang from our side will present a little bit about some of the use cases of Lava actually. And it touches on some of the stuff you mentioned at the end of the slides, like structured data extraction, captioning, um, even multimodal RAG. And, and so um, maybe just a quick question here is, and this is from the audience, mm -hmm. you use Clip uh, as a particular, uh, as the vision encoder. Uh, was there a particular reason for that? And, and do you see like improvements? Okay, uh, that's a good question. Uh, the reason we use Clip is because it has been trained on like the 400 million image taxpayers data set so that it actually has a great concept coverage. And uh, this allows us to like uh, train the this vision language model connector with very few samples and the language model actually, because the vision encoder already encodes great semantics for different concepts, language, we do not need to, uh, we can make our pipeline training uh, very data efficient. So uh, I think this is the main benefit for using Clip. And uh, we have been exploring uh, different uh, alternatives for the vision encoder, but I think the general, uh, like, the, like the top priority is that the vision encoder has been trained with, uh, it has seen lots of samples so that it can coverage a lot of concepts already. Uh, and this ensures that we do not need to fine tune this whole pipeline with like mil hundreds of millions data because that will be too expensive. Yeah. Makes sense. And then the second quick question is how does Lava perform on OCR uh, compared to maybe more specific OCR models uh, as well as like 4B? Oh yeah. So, so th th that's a great question. Like for, for OCR uh, capabilities, uh, the current Lava can, can demonstrate basic uh, OCR capabilities if the image resolution, because our Lava 1.5 accepts like 336 by 336 image. So if 
uh, they are reasonably within this resolution. The lava can do, I, I, I guess, okay in, in terms of this. And we do have an internal version that uh, we uh, add more OCR data. And also we add more uh, instructions that uh, kind of re request, uh, require OCR capabilities. And it will be, hopefully it will be released by the end of this year. Uh yeah and uh yeah it, it it's gonna be improved and another uh uh important uh factor for OCR capability is the image resolution and we do find that image Im image resolution is the key for having a great OCR capability and we are trying to work on a higher higher resolution version uh so that uh uh we can enjoy uh uh more benefits of Lava on. Uh, different tasks. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks so much. Uh, we'll cover some more questions uh, for it's kind of like a joint Q&A at the end. Um, mm -hmm. But in the meantime, um, how can from Lava Index, are you uh, you're ready to... So so basically, just for some context, um, uh, we actually have been playing around with multimodal um, models, including Lava, GPT-4V, uh, other models too. And we've basically, this is kind of to help you, you know, in the audience understand some use cases with multimodal. You know, obviously, Lama Dex is focused uh, primarily in the tax based setting uh, over the course of the past year, uh, like RAG, agents, structured data extraction. And so you can see some of these concepts actually translate into the joint image text setting as well as the use cases. Um, so, yeah, how to feel free to take it away. Yeah, thanks, Jerry. Uh, and also, thanks, uh, another whole team for the, the great presentation. Yeah, Jerry, so you can see my screen, right? So everyone can see my screen yep. and hear me. Okay, cool. Yeah, let me start. So uh, thanks a lot for like the whole team to intro the Lava. I think everyone here basically understands how the Lava is built and trained and also has also different use cases. For that main that's basically we are, for this part, we are covering three use cases we are using Lava. So as Jerry said, we are more, so Lava index purpose is more focused on tests. So we are doing a lot of rack based on tests. But recently we have the Lava GP4V, those kind of large vision model in the pause to do more like using image to understand the image reasoning and also improve our rack system. I will give three examples here. So the first example is pretty uh, straightforward. So uh, basically we are doing some, we have some like the Tesla uh, 10K fire. Tesla 10K as you can see is basically the, the financial report every quarter or every year for company. So there are a lot of tables, a lot of text inside the financial report. So one thing we think uh, is that if we have an image, so can we using the, uh, also using our rack to capture those image? So Lava is a great vision model. So basically we can somehow understand to the image reasoning from the image using Lava. And then we get the text output from the image reasoning. Then we do the rack based on the, the text. So here we first load the, like the Tesla 10K model, uh, Tesla 10K fire. So basically we are using the uh, advanced re recursive retrieval to retrieve some tables, some text, from the Tesla 10K uh, fire. Then we build some of the index on the Tesla fire. Then for the vision part, uh, this is one image I give as uh, like an input. So this is the image for the Tesla. My question here for this image is that what the Tesla uh, factor is showing in the image? Please give me the short answer. Basically, I found the lava sometimes too verbs. So I, if I want to get the accurate, like the, the concise answer, basically I say, hey, can you give me the name of the factory? So it gave me the correct answer, but somehow it's a Giga Texas. The full name should be the Giga uh, Texas factory. And then after get the response, the image reasoning for the Lava model, what I do is that I ask the, or, or Tesla 10K fire. So this is the giant fire contain a lot of information from Tesla. And then I do the retrieval based on the, the Lava response, basically it's a, a Tesla factory. I get a lot of nodes. So there are some nodes uh, related to a table, some nodes with uh, just a text from the uh, PDF file. So this, this file is like external knowledge about the Tesla. From Lava itself, I don't think it can capture all the information from Tesla. So if we have those in external knowledge, it can help us better understand what the image is about. So I ask the, the or RAG system, hey, can you do the retrieval based on the query uh, generated from the Lava basis? Uh, like the Texas uh, factory, you will can generate the final answer, give more information from the Texas factory. So it says uh, the factory refers to the Giga factory located in Texas, and it has some equipment, whatever, um, showing the uh, response. So basically the idea is that 
combines a vision model, large vision model for the image reason, and also our rack system with a lot of text re uh, rich information, we can somehow generate a better understanding for the query and also for the user intent. So this is the first example. The second example is very similar to what uh, another whole team uh, introduced. So we found that also Lava is very good at to output some structured data. So I can give an example, especially for the uh, e-commerce and also search ads recommendation area. So some, a lot of times we have those kind of uh, uh, products. So people usually do the web crawling for those products, uh, to cross the products, the title, description, brand, etc. But we find that uh, we can just directly using the image, using the screenshot of the post, because this is one ads post from Instagram. And it shows the, the, the uh, Air Jordan Nike shows and also the brand, the price. So basically we directly ask Lava what's the information inside this image. And here we are using some advanced, uh, advanced uh, like the structure output. So we call it a pandemic. So pandemic is a class that we can say, we can set some attribution to some what kind of account brand product we want uh, output from this image. Then we ask Lava, hey, can you generate the class attribution for this image? And surprisingly, uh, this is my prompt. Can you summarize what's in the image and the return answer in the JSON format and I'm sending to the, the PyJoint, this class, to understand, to fill every attribute of this class. And we can see that uh, by calling the Lava 13B uh, model, you can generate the account brand or the category, everything very accurately. So basically, instead of we cross the data from like a web page or from text, we can potentially directly using the image uh, reasoning and also some OCR type. Uh, model to understand, okay, what's what's the information for this image and also attribution. And the third example is that after we have pandemic, those kind of structure output from the image, now we can do multi-model like the rack system. So multi-model rack uh, is basically the, a retrieval system is basically, we not only have the image, uh, the text embedding, we also have the image embedding. So basically we have the text, we have uh, image, we can build different value DB, value uh, store for those text and image embedding. So basically here I build some data set using the, some random Wikipedia page because Wikipedia page really has the uh, image and also have the text. So I cross some data from the Wikipedia uh, with a different type of the Wikipedia page. I build the multi-model vector index. So you can see here we, have, we are using one uh, value DB. So it's the quadrant. And also we are building two sets of value store. One is the text store. Text store is uh, all the text from Wikipedia. And the image store is all the image we call from the same Wikipedia page. We load into the, or like the vector DB, multi model vector DB. Now we do retrieval because this is all the image uh, we caught from the Wikipedia. And our query here is uh, from the same example. Our query here is uh, just Air Jordan, the brand. We want to find all the relevant information for this specific query from the, from the image. Then the results here we are showing when we do the retrieval. We're showing this is the top three uh, retrieval image, most similar to the query Air Jordan. And also we are returning the text notes. This is all the text, uh, most relevant text uh, relevant to this query the Air Jordan. So after we have the image and also we have the most relevant text, we can somehow ask in the LM, for example, GPT-4, uh, GPT-4 and also other LM to summarize what we can, uh, according to those image, according to this top K, retrieve the uh, text, what can we summarize information? So basically my prompt, final prompt for this uh, query is that, can you tell me more about uh, this brand, the pandemic response basis Air Jordan? You can, according to the image we retrieve and also tell the retrieve, you can summarize the perfect uh, response to answer this uh, question. Yeah, so I just demonstrated the three simple use cases uh, allowing that we are trying to leverage Lava as a uh, vision model to improve our current record system. Yeah, so this is my part. Great. Um, and uh, I, I know there was like three main sections in there. There's actually a lot for each of those. Um, so if you think about the first one, um, retrieval augmented image captioning, basically the idea is that give, given an initial image caption, can you augment it with additional text from a knowledge base? Um, the second piece is like the structured output extraction with which uh, both Haotian's basically demonstrated. Um, and then the third is just how do you actually plug in, you know, uh, RAG pipelines um, and, and add in images in addition to text as inputs. So we have a lot of these different use cases. Uh, this one notebook, I think, is primarily focused on 
lava, right? I know you're saying using GPT four B. I don't I don't know if this is using four B or or uh, mostly using um, lava. But either way, you know, we we integrate with a variety of these models, um, and we're constantly exploring new use cases. So if there's things that you guys are interested in trying out, um, or think that there's potential uh, applications of multimodal in your setting, uh, please let us know, right? Because we we're, we have actually probably ten plus guides on multimodal stuff right now. Um, and and we're very open to kind of exploring more stuff here. Oh, cool. So I know there's some uh, questions in the chat. Um, I figured in the meantime, um, and by the way, the, the uh, link to the notebook and the collab, it, it's both in the Zoom chat as well as available on our docs page. Um, in the meantime, I figured we would could just like ask some questions to basically um, kind of uh, both uh, Hao Tan Liu as well as uh, Hao Tan Zhang. Um, both kind of on the research side as well as on the um, application side, right? And some of these questions might be more applicable to to some of you versus um, uh, versus others. Maybe maybe to start with, and this is just running through questions from the audience. Um, can Lava be used uh, to answer questions about tables? Maybe maybe uh, how tan how tan z uh, you can take that for, for first. Uh, I think I can take, I try to, if you check our, like the Lava index, Lama index, like the repo, we do have some, recently have some examples parsing the tables directly from PDF. And we try different models, the, mostly the GB4V and also there's a TATR, I think it's a text uh, table extractor model from Microsoft. We found that uh, sometimes I can, I can be referring to the Lava 13B we are testing is not very good at extracting the table contents. And especially when the table from PDF is pretty uh, complicated. Some tables has a different columns and have different rows. But we found the best solution here is that first, we take the screenshot of each PDF page. And then we use in TATR, the Microsoft uh, package to identify the location of the table. Then we extract the table from the PDF and send to the GB4V for on-sending. So somehow it can give us the, the best kind of or best results compared to the different uh, options. And I think uh, I will leave the, the Lava quality for understanding the table to Hao Tian Liu. I think there's still a lot of unsolved problems, especially for the tables in the PDF. Yeah, so this is my take. Um, and then Hao Tian Liu, do you have uh, things that? Yeah, yeah, I just want to quickly add because uh... Yeah, I think uh, first, like uh, parsing the ta text in the tables is a very important application, and we've been working on that. the The main reason for, uh, for that is that I I I think for current like multi model models, you do to 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 complete a task, you either need a very large capacity for it to emerge if it is not instructed to do so, or you have some specific instructions. T teaching those models on how to solve this task. So Lava is mainly currently relying on its emerging capabilities for solving these tasks because the current released version does not has not been fine tuned on those tasks that much. So yeah, we, we uh, like hopefully it will be um uh, uh much more improved much improved more improved in our uh later update. But I think it's generally uh for for like most of the existing open source models, it's like this where you, uh, if uh, you find the model does not perform well on a task, it is, uh, very first very likely that it's not trained to perform such task or has not been trained on similar task so that it cannot easily extrapolate. And second is that it may not have a very ba uh, it, it may require the model to be trained on a large scale, like o o, for example, OCR, it, it needs some base uh, capability for different tasks, like the extracting table, it needs the OCR capability. It also needs language capability to output the tables in a structured format. So I think uh, like we can think of these uh, this way. And also uh, I do see like some community members have found that fine tuning Lava on some uh, table data directly can allow it to improve the such performance because you now instructed, you have provided instructions on how to, how the model should, should solve this task. Yeah. Great. And and maybe a question for you, how Tan Lu is um, there's, uh, speaking of instruction tuning, um, I actually had a question that might also help kind of elucidate this for, for the audience. Um, in terms of generating instruction tuning data, you, you mentioned using like text-only model, like GPT-4, basically, to help you uh, kind of generate, you know, 
given some inputs, like uh, more detailed responses. Um, could you actually walk a little bit more through how that process works? Because one thing I noticed is that in addition to the image caption itself, you actually put the bounding boxes in text form. And I'm curious if that was like in your mind, like a key trick that you did to really kind of upgrade the quality of this instruction tuning data. And if you think there's actually future directions here to basically kind of use text-based models with more inputs to actually help improve the quality uh, of, of, of the data set. Yeah, that, that's a, a, actually a, a great question. So, uh, so, so basically like the key uh, the, the key that we use, uh, uh, the key is that we want to provide as much information as possible for the text GPT, text only GPT, so that they can know like what the image looks like. And also like, even if we have GPT for vision now, and let's suppose that it will not have like a quota limit uh, in the future at some point, it's still not perfect in all tasks. So if we do have some uh, ground truth annotations that we can leverage, that we can provide accurate information for GPT to directly leverage, it will be much, uh, it can uh, very much improve the quality of the generated instructions because now the uh, answers are more likely to be correct. So uh, going back to your question where like, why do we want to add the bounding box is that like, so so the, the captions will provide an image level uh, instructions and bounding box will provide more fine grained details on where the object actually look, look uh, are actually located at. So I think one extension or uh, to this is that it, let's suppose that we want to create instructions for the table data. And let's say that we actually have the uh, source markdown for creating those tables. Then we can like provide those markdown to the to GPT to tell it what this table look like, and that is generate like questions to the to this table. Uh, can it generate question to reformat this table? And it can because now the table of the those markdown table are just ground truth table, and there will not be errors for like if if you just provide a screenshot to GPT for vision, it may make make some mistakes in understanding those tables. So basically, uh, I think the key is first, uh, provide it with as much information as possible uh, as you can for, for uh, the task that or samples you want to provide. And second is that provide uh, as accurate information as possible. Mm -hmm. If you can provide some information that, that the uh, so that GPT-4 does not need to hallucinate or try to recognize itself, it will be the best. And, and maybe this is kind of like a dumb question, but maybe just like a quick follow on is if mm -hmm. you, um, you know, parse a table in a markdown, um, yeah. then for a lot of users, they, and, and you're able to do that well, then they might just stick with like a text model, right? Um, and, and so like, uh, is the additional advantage of using kind of like a multimodal model? Um, Cause you're also using like a text model to help generate some training data. Also oh. the fact that you have these like additional kind of um, general visual inputs and, and ground truth. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that's a good point. So we we do want to like make it clear that all like we although we generate those instruction data using a tech a text model, we finally are training a multi-model model. The reason we provide the markdown is that we want to provide it accurate information on how the what the table looks like, so that it can, for example, if you ask questions about the table. Uh, it can ge generate the uh, retrieve the very accurate answer, and it does it will not contain any errors in terms of OCR, for example. And in terms of training the model, you're still providing the, uh, for example, if you train Lava for table understanding, you're still providing the screenshot of the table, and then you ask it, for example, uh, to retrieve some values from this table, and you have an answer, and those instructions are generated by a text GPT. And this way, like the use, uh, when the user, uh, you train this model and the user are using this Lava variant that's our fine tuned for the table use case, the user are still like taking a screenshot and ask the questions, then Lava will refer to the image and give the answer. So, yeah. Great, makes a lot of sense. Um, the next question is for both of you and we can start with Hao Tian Lu uh, on the research side uh, and then move to Hao Tian Zhang on the, on the use case side. What kind of future directions are you excited about, um, you know, on the model side as well as on the use case side? Yeah, that that's a great question. When we're excited to share about, uh, we we have uh, we think like the current uh open source model, the the there are two main uh weaknesses. Uh, first is the uh first is the uh 
the lack of the instructions to for real world applications, which is uh, an extension of our, what what we were talking about uh, about the tables. Where for some of the use cases, like understanding the tables or doing more complex reasoning about those memes or maybe structured data, and it has not been instructed to do so. So we're creating uh uh we're trying to create as much as application driven data instruction data as possible so that uh, it will have more like real world application value the second is that the main uh, the key limitation in, inside the language model and the multimodal model for the language model uh, because the base model are currently 13b so it may have the limited language reasoning capability so that some of the problem solving uh performance are bounded by the language model. Second is the input to the uh, uh, language model are not uh, large enough so that some of the details cannot be captured when you're, for example, when you're taking a screenshot of a document, 336 by 336 is definitely not enough. So we're trying to scaling up the resolution so that it can, uh, so try to solve this task from both the model side as well as the data set side to make it uh, more uh, ready for the application use. This is the for, for the image. And also like for the multi-model, definitely we want to see uh, what are the possibilities of having a unified model which can accept the image, can accept the video, can accept the audio, uh, and it can process that uh, simultaneously and how to handle uh, lar large memory, which we believe should be able to hand uh, uh should be very relevant to the rag uh systems where for example i think the i i saw someone asking about gemini and uh i i guess like for if you really want to create a demo video that gemini demonstrated you will need a great a huge number of the context window because and you we will also need a good retrieval system or I, either a good model to understand what are the relevant content in the history that you really want the model to consider when you are answering the question. Yeah, I think that's my my the answer from my my side. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense. Um, and then how to? Yeah, yeah, I think I totally agree with the uh, how to. Uh, for me, there's two two things. One is horizontally. Horizontal means that we may have a different type of input in like the video, audio, uh, image. So it's, it's a rotor AGI, right? Especially for retrieval for rack. Or if we have different information in the real industry, we may have the text, we have image, everything. How can we build a better retrieval ranking system to using all the information we need, right? So sometimes, for example, the image and text, they may, not, they may not match each other and also some provide some pollution data. How can we, uh, purifies the data and also using different uh, source is the one thing. Another thing is vertically. So, I, I mean, we have a lot of great models. Uh, Germany is coming out and also GPOV is improving. So those models are better for some specific tasks. OCR, maybe the table uh, parsing, those ta those tasks can be improved so that our retrieval system and also ranking or whatever system, they can using those capability to improve the accurate uh, accuracy of the precision recall. I think it will be also uh, very interesting. Yeah, so that's my take. Sweet. Um, I think that's basically it in terms of most of the main questions. Uh, of course, if you guys have uh, more thoughts or questions, please feel free to join our Discord uh, or just you know send Howtian uh, how Lu uh, questions about the Lava model itself. Um, yeah, I mean, this is this is a great session. Thanks to Howtian Lu and Howtian Zhang for, for um, taking part of this webinar. Uh, congrats, by the way, on the NORPS uh, oral. I know it's happening uh, next week, yeah, but that's a week, great yeah. achievement. Um, and so to everyone in the audience, uh, definitely highly encourage you to try to think about and track out some of our multimodal use cases. We're pretty excited about this. We think, you know, especially as these models get better and faster, um, as Lava gets better, um, as some of these proprietary models come out as well, like Gemini, there's gonna be an emerging class of use cases uh, beyond just pure LLMs. So definitely encourage you to check it out. Um, and thanks again uh, for coming and have a great Friday.